This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 1 in Module 2, 8th grade, Why Move Things Around. Student outcomes for this lesson. Students are introduced to vocabulary and notation related to rigid motions, that is, transformation, image, and map. Students are introduced to transformations of the plane and learn that a rigid motion is a transformation that is distance preserving. Students use transparencies to imitate a rigid motion that moves or maps one figure to another figure in the plane. Our essential question is, how can objects be moved in the plane while preserving their size and shape? Given two segments, A, B, and C, D, which could be very far apart, how can we find out if they have the same length without measuring them individually? Do you think they have the same length? And how do you check? Given angles AOB and angle A prime O prime B prime, how can we tell whether they have the same degree without having to measure each angle individually? And if two lines L and L prime are parallel and they're intersected by another line, how can we tell if the angle A and B as shown have the same degree when measured? We're looking at two geometric figures, either two segments, two angles, two triangles, in different parts of the plane, and we have to find out if they are, in some sense, the same. The same length, the same degree, the same shape. There are three standard moves we can use to bring one figure on top of the other to see if they coincide, or if they're identical. So the key question is, how do we move things around in the plane? Keeping in mind that lines are still lines after being moved, lengths of segments and degrees of the measure of angles remain unchanged. Moving things around in a plane is exactly where the concept of transformation comes in. A transformation of the plane, and will be denoted that by F, is a rule about moving an object, and when we move it we call the new figure the image. So taking a look again at segment A, B, and C, D, I want to know if they are identical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of transparency paper and I'm going to cover the figure with it. Then I'm going to trace the original figure. This is segment A, B. I'm going to try to do that one more time, just a little neater. Then what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to lay it over the other image and see if it coincides. And it does. So the way that we checked that is that we took a piece of transparency paper, we laid it over the image and we drew the image. Then we moved it over the other image to see if it matched. We can do the same thing or the same procedure with the angles to see if they are identical. So we'll take our transparency paper, we'll put it over the image, then we'll trace the image, and now I'm going to move it over this one. And as I move it over, I'm also going to need to turn it a bit. And I can see that it does, in fact, coincide with the original image. If two lines, L and L prime, here is line L, and here is L prime. If those two lines are parallel and they are intersected by another line, how can we tell if angle A and angle B, as shown, have the same degree when measured? We can actually follow the same procedure by using the transparency paper. So I'm going to take the transparency paper and lay it, lay it over the angle. Then I'm going to carefully draw the angle. The more accurately that you can draw the original figure, the easier it will be able to see the transformation if it is the same or not. So um, I've got it on there. And what I'll do next is I'll move my angle and see if I can match it up with angle B. So I need to get the vertex from A to the vertex of B. So I think what I'll do is I'll try turning that. 
and then sliding it into position. Huh, and that shows that they have the same degree when measured. So take a look at this map in the corner here. I also used map terminology when I read the lesson outcomes on the first page. Think of how you would draw a street map. It may be a complicated process, but a mathematically accurate description for the purpose of school mathematics may be that one starts with an aerial view of a particular portion of a city. In the picture below, we look at the area surrounding the Empire State Building, ESB, in New York City. The picture reduces a three-dimensional information into two dimensions, then maps each point on the street to a point on the paper. A point on the street becomes a point on your paper, the map, so you are mapping each point on the street to your paper. For example, we could mark the corner of the intersection of these two streets. So to reiterate the terminology, you're mapping each point onto the street onto your paper. So transformations can be defined on spaces of any dimension, but for now we're concerned with transformations in the plane in the sense that transformations are those that assign a point on the plane to another point on the plane. They can be complicated, but for now we'll only concentrate on simple transformations, namely those that preserve distance. A main purpose of this module is to introduce many other pre distance preserving transformations and show why they're important in geometry. In this exploratory challenge, we want to describe intuitively what kind of transformation will be required to move the figure on the left to each of the figures 1, 2, and 3 on the right. To help with this exercise, use a transparency to copy the figure on the left. Note, begin by moving the left figure to each of the locations 1, 2, and 3. So again, we want to describe intuitively what kind of a transformation we're going to be using. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to take my transparency paper and I want to put it over the figure and I want to trace that figure. So the best that I can here, stay on the line. And the neater I do this, the easier it will be to see the transformation. All right, that's pretty good. The question is asking what kind of a move would I need to, to put it on figure one. So if I took my figure and I slid it over, that would be enough to get me on the first figure. So that was sliding it over to get to figure one. Now to get to figure two, uh, I can slide it over, but it's not exactly on there. Uh, what if I turned it? No, that didn't work, so I'll put it back. So I did need to slide it over. Um, what if I flip it? Ah, there we go. So for the second figure, I had to slide it and flip it. Okay, so the first one was a slide. The second one, the second image is a slide and a flip. So now what would we need to do to move the shape to the new image. So sliding it over gets it there, but what do I need to do next? Would I need to flip it, turn it, slide it again? And this is actually turning it. And another word for turn is to rotate. So to get to the third position, I did a slide and I did a turn. And those are some of the transformations that we're going to be doing in the next few lessons. Given two segments, A, B, and C, D, which could be very far apart, how can we find out if they have the same length without measuring them individually? Do you think they have the same length? How do you check? In other words, why do you think we need to move things around on the plane? So um, let's go ahead and do the similar procedure with the transparency paper. Here's our transparency paper. We'll put it on there, then we trace the line as best we can. And then we will move our image and see if it will fit over the other image. 
So I've slid it over, but I'm going to need to turn it a bit too. Let's try that. Maybe a little turn there. And is it the same? Yes, it is. A transformation that preserves distance is known as a rigid motion. The distance between any two corresponding points is the same after the trans transformation is performed. We'll be talking more about these rigid motions and preserving distance over the next few lessons. In the summary, I want to introduce some terms you'll be using in the next few lessons. It may be a bit confusing today, but you'll become familiar and understand the terms as we use them in our lessons. In this lesson, we used a transparency to represent the plane and move the figures around. You can check to see if one figure is the same as another by mapping one figure onto another and checking to see if they coincide. A transformation that preserves distance is known as a rigid motion, and the distance between any two corresponding points is the same after the transformation is performed. A transformation on the plane denoted by F is actually a rule that assigns to each point P of the plane one and only one unique point, which will be known, denoted by F of P. So you have the original point P and then you have the translated or the transformed P. By definition, the symbol F of P denotes a single point. The, single, the symbol F of P shows clearly that F moves P to F of P. The point f of p will be called the image of p by f. We also say f maps p to f p. If any two points p and q, the distance between the images f p and f q is the same as the distance between the original points p and q, then the transformation f preserves distance or is distance preserving. A distance preserving transformation is called a rigid motion. This is important to know. It's also called an isometry, and the name suggests that it moves the point in the plane in a rigid fashion or in a stiff fashion. So don't get caught up by the vocabulary here. We'll learn it as we go through each lesson.